everybody Stuart from Riku here today I've got a bit of a different video and something that I'm going to do a series on and this is going to be trying to prove the hypothesis that you can create a custom image model based on stable diffusion by taking images off of a model which somebody has already created and it's pretty similar to how we look at reverse engineering text prompts. We've shown in previous videos how you can sort of reverse engineer anything from Jasper or Copy AI, and I'll link those videos in the description. But what I want to try now is something a bit more adventurous. And what we're going to do is we are going to take all of the data available from Lexica.art on their Aperture V2 model, and then we're gonna feed that in to a stable diffusion fine tune to see what model we can get out. So this is gonna be a multi-part series, and the first video which I'm gonna create now is gonna be about scraping this data. And we're gonna do this without code, we're gonna do this in a way that I would do it without code because I don't code myself, and I'm gonna show you all of the tools that I use for this. So first of all, I am on lexica.art. You can see there is all of these beautiful images. It's a really beautiful model. And if we can replicate it and prove this hypothesis, then that's gonna be super awesome. So let's see how we get on. So the first thing that I would do here would be to try and see how these images are loading because we want to try and get them. And you'll see as you scroll down, they continue to load and they continue to load. And looking in the inspect element, it's really quite interesting because they have something called infinite loop. So we, cl we right click, we do inspect element and we come over to network. And we are here, it's recording any network activity that happens. And you'll notice if we scroll down, it starts to show all of these images. But if we scroll down far enough, we have this infinite prompts that has popped up. And this is the important thing that we need. So we can look through and we can see the payload. The payload has this cursor number. So we have this cursor number of 2,700. And if I wanna filter out all of the other noise here, I can do that by just typing infinite or part of that and we will see. So we have two here. We have one which is 2,700 and we have one which is 2,650. So every time that it loads on the page, it's loading 50 more of these images. So this is great. And if we go to response, we can see what it's doing. It's giving us uh, it's giving us a bunch of information about these images. It's giving us the IDs and it's giving us everything that we need. So what we can do is we know that we are at 2,700. Well, this request will be 2,650 because it's saying, okay, start at 2,650 give me the next 50 and then in the response it will give me okay so the next starting point if you want more images is going to be 2700 so how would we go from having this endpoint here to then being able to scrape this data one of the tools i like to use is na10 it's uh free to use you can download the desktop client or you can self-host it or they have a cloud version and this is our workflow here, right? So we have a request. We're sending a request to Lexica and we are hitting this infinite prompts and we are sending everything they need to get the cursor value we need. And when I was playing around with this, I found that we were seeing the images top out about there's about 7,050 images in total. I'm not sure exactly how many, um, but you'll notice if you do the infinite loop and you go through and you keep scrolling and you keep scrolling, it will reset the cursor back to one. Um, so that is interesting to note. So what's going on here? When we hit execute, which is when we hit down here, 
it's going to run the request. It's going to run the infinite prompt request, which is here. This is going to return the information in this uh, this uh, this request, and then we want to do a condition if there is an ID and it's not empty, we want it to continue. Whereas if it is empty, we want it to stop. And we're using this run index because we're working with an array, which means that every time we run through this, it's gonna have image and it's gonna have image zero and it's gonna have image one and image two and image three and image four and image five. So what the run end, yeah. what the run index does is it just tells you every time that we run this up the number by one so every loop it's going to go one 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 and then it's going to go two 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 and so on and so on and every time we are going back through this conditional and if it's empty we know it's done so that's really important to sort of understand here we are getting the actual image file from the request so we we know that this is going to give us the image back we get the file back we want it as a file type we want the name of that file to be data and then we wait one second purely to make sure that we are you know not hitting any rate limits and the requests will continue to run through and then what we're doing is we are writing a binary file to our desktop so you'll see here you have my name and I made a folder which is testing NAN and it's outputting the file into this folder. What I'm going to do for this video is I'm just going to have a different name folder which is video showcase because you'll see here, here is my testing NAN folder with a bunch of images. You know, this has already been done. So we're getting all of these images. Whereas if I come in to a video showcase folder, you'll see that this is empty now. So what we're gonna do is we are now going to start getting the data together. So what I will do is I will just scroll down to get the next infinite prompts. And I will right click on it and I will say copy copy as curl, then I will come back in to my NAN. I'll click on this first request and then there's this handy import curl button, which we can click on and we can then copy what's in our clipboard into here. So we can hit import. That's already put all of the information in here for us. We can then hit save on this workflow. We can give it a name if we want, but you know, I'm lazy. So my workflow two works for me. And then we can hit execute. And you'll see that this now is looping through those 50 files, right? So if I drag this across, you'll see that I'm getting these images. I'm getting these images, I'm getting these images, which is great because I can use these for a data set when we start to fine tune this model. So this is super interesting to be able to quickly get the data that we want and then we can feed this data into a custom model. And yeah, what we're trying to prove is, can we take the outputs of a custom model and can we replicate the style of that model by purely using the outputs? So this is gonna run, it's gonna run through 50 times, I imagine, because we are taking the cursor point, which is uh, here, 2,800, and it's gonna run up to 2,850. So when we get to the end here, we then have uh, a couple of things that we can do. It's going to take a little bit of time. And I just wanna say with this series, what we're gonna be doing is we are showing how we're gonna scrape. We're then gonna be showing how we prepare the data set, right? Because we have the images, but we might, we might want to add captions to those images. 
So it helps the AI know what sort of thing is in this uh, data set. And then we might want to append or prepend certain things. So I could say, you know, lexica style or whatever at the end. And then when people run this model, they will be able to put in lexica style and it will give images output in the same sort of way. So we're going to go scraping. We're going to go building out the data set and preparing it for the fine tune. And then I'm going to show you how to actually create this fine tune model. So we're going to be using 6,500, 7,000 uh, images for this. Let's just see how many there actually are in the folder, which is already done. And there's 6,890 in this folder. So these are all images that we're going to use for this data set. And for the video showcase folder, you'll see we now have 43 complete. We're nearly at the end. Everything is running smoothly with the workflow because we have this uh, little weight. So we're not hitting any rate limits. We're not getting uh, blocked from uh, doing this. And uh, yeah, I, I've looked at the Lexica uh, page for the pricing and it says as long as you have a plan, you're free to use the images commercially. And if you, uh, you can use the images personally if you don't. So this is what I'm doing here. Um, so we have 49 run throughs here. 49, done, awesome. And that is pretty much the scrape. So then if we wanted to then go to the next amount, what I would have to do is I'd have to find in here where we have that, uh, the cursor value. Where was it? Uh, it's down here, yeah. And then I just up this by 50 and I'd hit save. And we'd run and you'll see we have an error and the error is because some of the authentication within the header and everything is unique for each request so you may have to actually come in here trigger the next one copy the request open backup and import the curl again and if you import and you hit save and you hit execute you start over and you're going to get the next 50 images are going to load up for you. So that's pretty cool, pretty easy to do. And that's pretty much where I'm going to leave this video. So there is a little bit of manual work in ensuring that you can get all of these images. And you'll see here, if I just put these in uh, date order, we are continuing to add here, but you can do this to get all the images that you need. And then the next step is going to be formatting this data. So we have the images and we have captions for these images ready to go with a training. So multi-part series, first part done. This is a little bit different. We're just sort of diving a bit deeper into how you can do something like this with image models. Let me know your thoughts if you like this type of content and if you think that we should do more of it at Riku because we're all about teaching and helping people make the most of AI in both text-based AI, image AI, and all sorts of AI in the future. And if you haven't already, consider signing up for Riku today. We are a aggregated playground and education platform to help you build up prompts, build up data sets, build up fine tunes for both text and image and we make it simple and do it in a way without any code. Although if you do use code, we also have some handy little tools for you as well. So stay tuned for version two coming very, very soon. Thank you.